Today, I am so excited. We have Dr. John Gray with us. I know you know who he is, but for the one person that maybe don't know, let's say Dr. John Gray is the author of the most well-known and trusted relationship book of all the time. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. It was the number, the top 10 most influential book of the 90s. In hardcover, uh, it sold, how many books you sold on? You, do you know? Well, in America, in hardcover, 15 million, but around the world, not in hardcover. It's over 50 million. It, I've been to over uh, 30 countries teaching these ideas. It's amazing how it spread. Regardless of the culture, many of the ideas everybody could relate to. That is unbelievable. How do you wrap up your mind around that? I, I don't, I, but I give, I counsel people every day and I teach workshops. But when I travel, I give these big audiences. Uh, it's quite amazing. And people feel it's changed their life. And not Absolutely. everybody, but it's had a big effect. It, an amazing effect. It gave us so much freedom, understanding finally why you know, we couldn't see eye to eye to everything. It's just the differences are are amazing. So welcome. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, so the first question would be, you wrote that very book about 30 years ago. Things have changed quite a bit since then. How do you see that... Um, what do you see is the biggest, biggest change in relationships, in the way we relate with technology? Well, the 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 dark cloud, how relationships have changed is that people are not getting together as much as they used to. There's now uh, twice as many single people in, in the marriage age uh, as it used to be when I wrote that book. Now, part of why that is, and, and there's... You know, there's many reasons, but I see from my lens, from my glasses, the shift from when birth control happened, mm. it created a huge freedom for women to postpone becoming mothers because you can control, you know, the birthing process. So now we have women being educated throughout their 20s and their 30s, making money, being independent, which I think is a great thing. People keep that in mind. What I define that as is taking on roles, which men traditionally did. Right. Women are doing roles that men traditionally did, and there's no time to do roles that women traditionally did. So there's a lot of pressure around 35 years old. Your clock is ticking. That's right. another source of stress. But that's not what I focus on. What I focus on is when women take on traditional male roles, they make traditional male hormones. Mm. So there's, there's a reality to when I am uh, have a goal and I put myself to the side to achieve that goal, whether I like achieving it or not, that's called the grind of work. You know, all of us go to work. <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't want to go, but you have to because you're right. making money and you're working with people that you don't necessarily like or love. Mm -hmm. so love produces a hormone called estrogen and women need at least 10 times more estrogen than men to feel reasonably good otherwise yeah. they're stressed and this is biologically proven that when women's estrogen levels drop to a certain level their stress level goes up mm -hmm. or when things are stressful uh your estrogen levels will start dropping so for women, uh, one of the major sources of stress from a conceptual point of view is when she doesn't feel I'm supported, that I have enough support, I have enough time, I have enough uh, love in her life. Basically, love and helping, people helping her raises estrogen. So think about it. Historically, before we had all these hormonal imbalances that we see today, Men with low testosterone, women with right. low estrogen, women with low progesterone. These, at these a very are, young age. At the yes. very young oh, age. it's happening all over the place. It's it's crazy. So the result of that, what we see is that when women's estrogen, progesterone levels are not in balance and testosterone, she's in a stressed state. Now, 
the early stages of a stress state for a woman look like I'm overwhelmed. I have no time. I can't take care of me. I have to do, I have to do, I have to do. Now, men, when they have to do, actually, that brings out the best of men. Because when you feel I have to do something, I'm needed. There's a time limit. There's a goal. I said I would do it. I have to do it. And he feels competent and capable. His mm -hmm. testosterone will shoot up. And what we see is a crisis now of men, uh, particularly younger generation, but it's affecting everybody. The testosterone levels are 20 to 30% lower than they were just uh, 20 years ago. If you go back 50 years ago. Why, is that? Why is that that the testosterone is lower in men? I didn't know that. It, it's a big, big question. Okay. <laughs> many, many answers. We can get into that. Uh, but let me make that very point about why are relationships so challenged today? Right. Is that when women are doing behaviors that I talked about, setting goals, doing what you have to do, urgency, risk, uh, that if you feel competent, right. that raises testosterone. Men need 10 to 20 times more testosterone than a woman in order to feel stress-free. So just keep this in mind. So we're like mirrors of each other. For men, testosterone goes up, we feel really good. But when men have low testosterone and estrogen goes up because they're doing what they enjoy doing, what they like to do, what's fun to do, or they feel uh, cooperation and support, that all makes, that's family, that's personal life. That right. produces estrogen. And estrogen has a tendency like a seesaw. When estrogen goes really high, testosterone goes down. Mm -hmm. Same thing for women. When their testosterone goes high, their estrogen or progesterone goes down. I mean, literally the biology of making testosterone depletes women of progesterone because first their body makes progesterone. And then if, you need, if you're in urgency, risk, danger, rushing, your progesterone turns into testosterone. So you're actually running low in progesterone just because you're making too much testosterone. And again, there's nothing wrong with making testosterone for women. It's all part of their libido as well. But it's what's interesting, when we have sex and we're married, I know today we want to focus more on the dating, but this is a big picture because many people who are dating were in relationships and wondered what happened. Why did it feel so bad? Well, when it comes to making love, which is a big part of why we get married, why we're attracted to somebody, unquenchable attraction, and then it goes away. Oh, no. And so everybody's thinking was well, the wrong person, lack of relationship skills. Definitely the bigger part of it is lack of relationship skills and understanding, particularly around making love. I don't want to focus just on sex skills. I have other books for that. But biologically for a woman, when she dates a guy that there's some kind of connection, some attraction happening, we can talk about how women get attracted, how men get attracted. But when... When the, when the attraction is there, it's there's some level of, of biological compatibility, not completely, but you know, I'm not turned on to any woman, every woman. Right. Actually, for me, at, at five seven, my height, any woman that's a foot lower than me is opportunity. <laughs> when I was when I was young, when I was young. You should know this women. <laughs> but I'm five four. <laughs> yes, you're like the perfect I mean, yes. guys. Men need to be taller and men need to be older. Don't have to be, but those are immediately, if a man is older, they'll be wiser, more competent, more capable. Right. He'll be attracted to a woman who's less, more competent and capable. It just happens because men are always looking for somebody who needs me, that I have something to offer. Mm. Like, imagine I'm a fireman. I'm just dead all the time until there's a fire. Right. I'm alive. You see, men have to feel this sense of, I can provide something to someone who needs me, depends on me for something of meaning for them. Right. Now what happened in terms of making love, in the beginning, there's a dopamine rush. Anytime we're experiencing danger or newness, uh, the brain will produce dopamine, particularly in a sexual attraction. Huge mm -hmm. amount of dopamine happens by family, by, by something being new and different. So you get a rush of estrogen for women and a rush of testosterone for men, which is the alchemy of attraction, is when a man's testosterone is much higher than a woman's and a woman's estrogen is much higher than hers. That's called polarity. And right. polarity is what we want to focus on to create attraction, sustain attraction, and connect with our heart. So polarity is there. 
But in the beginning, you maybe don't need that much polarity just because there's newness. See, right. newness will stimulate the estrogen, the testosterone. But more a woman can work on being on her feminine side and a man can be on his masculine side, the more polarity will, there'll be. Just like a man treats her to dinner. I provided something for you. And women today think, oh, I should pay. Or, you know, <laughs> it's don't. Right. Don't. You want to give him opportunities and you don't owe him anything. If he buys you dinner, you're... Re reciprocal response is, wow, what a delicious meal. I had such a good time. Thank you so much. That's the gift men are all looking for. Yes. Thank so, you. So back to the making love thing. I just want to point that one thing out is when couples don't have newness, they don't have a meet sustained attraction. See, mm -hmm. serotonin comes in, we feel comfortable, we become like boy, like friends, basically. Right. That's something that's happened for people in the past. And so you have to understand part of why that happened. You didn't work on the polarity of the relationship, which is men in your presence feeling needed for something that's of value to you. And then he'll feel attracted to you and sustain that attraction. And for a woman to be attracted to, to a man, uh, she needs to be on her female side and she'll find a man attractive. Otherwise, <laughs> if she's not on her female side, men are just not enough. And that's what I see women over 30, 40, 45, they, I meet these nice guys, but there's no juice. There's no excitement. They're not, you know, mm -hmm. I don't feel some, some passion. Well, you can't feel passion with a man if your estrogen levels aren't at the level of passion. So you have basically the normal day-to-day -day level of estrogen if you're happy. Let's say you're happy and you know it, you're having a good time, life is good, which is rare today, but it does exist. And so when you have that stability of healthy estrogen, because in your life you have support, you have enough money, you have enough support, friendship, you have the things that will produce estrogen is when you feel I have what I need. Now, when you have what you need, that's, we'll call that your baseline of estrogen. To have romantic feelings, it has to double. Wow. To double. And how do you double it? Well, we have to learn how to double our romantic feelings. And that's the dating process allows women to experience somebody taking care of me, somebody I can depend on, somebody I can trust, somebody I can ask for help and get it right away a man who's eager to give and right. a woman who is open to receiving and so that that's the art of being feminine and the art of being masculine is ultimately completely selfless masculinity is selfless and hear this the right way but femininity is completely selfish it says me 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 and there's nothing wrong with that because nobody is just me 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 it's also you 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 women are selfless but women are stressed out being selfless if they haven't first gotten what they need. See, men, basically, they're selfless, and then their goal is to get what they need. And what they need, ironically, is not so much for themselves, but it's to feel, I have mission and purpose, and I have fulfilled somebody. So the greatest gift you can give to a man is giving him a kind of a landscape in which he can make a difference. When a man feels, I make a difference, his testosterone goes up, and he can even make commitment, he can be romantic, but it's all about cranking his testosterone up. Right. And what's happened in the whole dating scene over the last 40 years is that women don't need men. <laughs> you know, just... Like what do you mean by that? Well, it's it basically, I say to women all the time, well, why do you want a relationship with a man? Yes. It would be nice. I'd like that. I said, well, that's not going to sell. Basically, there's a part of women that are afraid to admit or think it's weakness and unattractive is I need a man. Right. Is I need. And now for you, you're very feminine. So, you know, I, you can feel I need a man. I like having a man. I enjoy a man. But, absolutely. absolutely. But there's there's no permission for a woman in the workplace to reveal her needs. Now, when you have needs that are not being met, what's the symptom of that? Frustration, disappointments worries, concern, embarrassment, sadness, mm. being scared, wow. being afraid, wow. all those, that's a part of every human being. Right. In women, it's, we don't know how much more, but we know that when you feel those emotions, your estrogen goes up. Okay. So when your estrogen is low, you have negative emotions. And when you feel them, you bring attention to them and look at them your estrogen will start to go up or you share them with somebody and it goes up even more. You share them with a man and it goes up even more. So why is it that so many relationships fail is that women 
when they start to feel safe, they want to share their feelings, but they don't know how to share feelings in a way that a man can hear. Right. <laughs> So. And how, how that how can a woman that's great so how can a woman can share her feelings in a way that a man can hear her because I know I you know I have read a few of your books and I know what you say that men like to do and women like to talk and there is a crashing in the middle but there are many couples that are happily married I am happily married you are happily married so there yes. is a way to do it yes there's a way to do it and just people haven't been taught when 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 to a certain extent you depend if for a woman if she's depending on her husband for the majority of her income yes. it's much easier right because she's more in touch with her female side and so what comes out of her is not so negative uh, but what, when women are in the workplace, the workplace requires you to push your emotions down. It's business. Right. It's not personal. It's business. It's maybe a little personal, but it's business. You don't do a good job, you're fired. Okay, so it, it's not family. My kids are my kids don't do a good job. They're not fired. Yeah, you know? and Daddy always loves them. So yeah. there's, there's a different relationship: unconditional love versus very, very conditional in the workplace. Very conditional, yes. So when women are in the workplace and they're not making a lot of estrogen because they don't feel safe to express their feelings, their emotions, particularly emotions, uh, then what occurs is in psychology, she suppresses. So she's suppressing her emotions. And when emotions get suppressed, they don't come out very sweet. They come out <laughs> exaggerated. We overreact. Put a potato in a drawer. It will come out with you not look at it for several months. You have all these fungus on it and everything. So so every woman knows there's times when it's such a good like, analogy love it right right it's just you can't just tuck it away it builds up and it builds up and when it comes out it comes out uh as an overreaction it's like being more upset let's say my wife sees i left my shoes in front of the tv set she likes a clean house i think you know she said like, would you please put your tv your shoes away and and it's not a big deal to her but if she has stress building up one more time how could you do that <laughs> so the little things become big things. And those are the irritants that happen in our life in a relationship. But even when a woman is dating a man, coming back to dating, if she hasn't connected fully with her femininity, she will become overly picky or demanding or judgmental mm -hmm. or critical of the man. So you, you feel like there's just no good men out there. There's a lot of good men out there and there's not, not all good men. Yeah. But what she's looking for, and now we're going to get into what I talk about Mars, Venus, and date. She's always looking, generally speaking, not everyone, but a woman who is single has a difficult time getting in relationships, okay? She'll tend to pick men that she's turned on to. Mm. That little excitement down south means he's the wrong guy. If you're turned on right away to a man, not always, okay? But mm. if you're turned on to a guy, my wife was turned on to me the first night, okay? So... <laughs> but it took a long time for us to actually get married. Just put that point in there. Uh, when when you're turned on right away to a person you don't know, it's purely dopamine. It's purely mm. dopamine. There, it's it's uh, a safer dynamic is, you know, if let's understand dopamine. Dopamine is the addictive brain chemical. So if I'm a child, I eat lots of sugar, which produces high dopamine. Vegetables don't taste good right there's a brain change that happens where you become dependent on higher stimulation higher uh, dopamine dopamine is produced from new and different or dangerous some women are completely turned on to dangerous men see women right. have this amazing intuition whereas he may even be married and she's turned on to him there's no chance so that's a danger uh, right. he may be taking drugs alcoholic uh and the signs are there but she doesn't see him because she's so turned on right uh, he may not have a job. Okay, that's definitely dangerous to be with a man who doesn't have a job. And maybe that turns her on because a part of her doesn't feel worthy of having a man take care of her. And we call this in psychology a daddy issue. Mm. If your daddy wasn't available to you. Now, this doesn't happen for every woman whose daddy wasn't available. But we look into psychology when a woman keeps getting turned on to strangers that they, she doesn't know who doesn't know her, who haven't earned their way into the palace, okay? you got to earn your way in as a man, providing the kind of support as opposed to imagined 
she imagines she can get what she needs from him on one part of her brain, but the other part of her brain knows this is not the right guy, but you're turned on to him. So you pursue it as curious, you, you lust for it. Any of those feelings, it's the wrong direction. And so if you've had that as a pattern and some women listening have, where you've been with men who after you made love, they're just not interested in you anymore. Mm. Or, you know, there's a, a great date. You think, what happened? He doesn't call back. You know, what's, what is going on in, inside of her? She picks the wrong men to go out with. Now, why does she pick those wrong men? Because there's wrong men. And there's also good men out there who just aren't going to chemically connect to right. you. Right, it's they don't get to biology. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, just because a man is good doesn't mean he's going to be in love with you. Okay, we have our own uniqueness, and there's a there's smells of genetic diversity that affect our attraction to each other. What is how our genes are going to go together? And you kiss somebody, it's another activation of it. And clearly, when there's intercourse, there's a huge activation of it. But having said all that, why is a woman keep this? Is a woman who has a pattern of attracting being attracted to the wrong man right. or the flip side of that, if you're if you are if you're in a sense addicted to the excitement and thrill of amazing, you know, it's like the pretty woman movie where he takes his woman on the streets, he puts her in his private jet, and he takes her here and he takes her there. You know, this is a relationship that's doomed. Uh, <laughs> I know. So, Sounds like okay, my my so, first marriage. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's just like very impressive, very exciting. Oh my God, it was so much fun for whatever so to, months it lasted. <laughs> so to the extent that we're addicted to the thrill, the excitement, or the sexual, immediate sexual interest, okay? Yeah. What that does, that's like eating sugar. And so you have a habit in your life of depending upon high stimulation right. that inhibits your ability to be turned on eventually to the right person. Mm. The right person. What, what would the wrong be that person. situation when, when if if the woman is turned on by this dangerous man, and so what what is her solution to to take her time to not jump into an immediate relationship? No, or... jump right into another relationship. It's basically to recognize your biology for a while is not going to be excited by the right man. You're okay. excited by the wrong man. That means you're not excited to the right man. So right. there'll be men you have to date who just because they have the qualities of somebody who has a good job and they're interested in you, they're motivated right. to please you. Uh, you can, you know, you want to, you don't want to lead somebody on, but you can say, you know, I'm, I'm, at, I, I'm not really ready to get in a committed relationship now. I'm sort of just enjoying myself. Okay. So you're not setting them up, but you're going to use men. You're going to use men uh, to practice the skills of being feminine. Right. Now, the skill, of, the opposite of being feminine, is trying to please somebody. As as paradoxical as that sounds, you know, we have a lot of people pleaser women, and their temperament it tends to be more wanting to please others because they're nurturers for children. So you you give unconditionally to children. So that's in your genes. Yeah. But with a man, when you give him more then what he's giving you, and certainly a dangerous man has no potential to give you what you want. You feel, oh, if I just give to him, I'll get back. That's why they call it a father uh, issue because my dad wasn't there for me. I still need to like, I can prove, I can be what you want me to be. There's like an urge to please a man, to need a man so much, that guy right away. Okay, so the, the safe guy, the right guy, and I can't say it's the first guy you're gonna date, but you want to start dating men who are more interested in you than you're interested in them. And you're definitely not interested in having sex with them anytime soon. Even if you're wow. horny, hold off. Okay, <laughs> just you, you want to have a man generate those feelings inside of you by dating you, honoring you, pleasing you, asking him for help, getting him to do stuff for you. Ladies, I hope you're taking notes on this, okay? I hope you're taking notes on this. Thank you, Dr. So, in, in the dating book, it was like on a date, for example, first of all, what's the concept when you're dating is, and, and first of all, finish that other thought. The arousal is healthy when you already feel very safe, you have good conversations with somebody, you find they, they value your thinking, you value their thinking, you have a sense of admiration for what he's thinking, kind of right. person is, the character he has. 
That's all in the head stuff, evaluation. The next is in the heart stuff. Does he do things for me? Is he happy to do things for me? Am I? Do I feel comfortable being myself around him? Do mm -hmm. I feel I can ask for what I want? Do I tell him three things that I'd like to do next weekend? And, he's, and you say, and you pick. So everything is for you, okay? That's the dynamic of the foundation of a good relationship because it brings out the best in men. If you don't ask men to do stuff, they, they have a gene that's different from women. We know that, but a lot few genes there. But one of them we can, in a playful way, look at, which is never do anything you don't have to do. Mm. You don't have that gene generally until you get really upset with somebody. Wow. Men are always like, if, you, if there's a fire, I'll put it out. If there's not, I'm going to conserve energy. I'm going to sit here and do nothing. Right. So it's up to women to draw men out. And this goes back thousands of years. I remember when I studied Hinduism for a time, the, the God of Hinduism is Shiva. He just sits in meditation all the time. And his wife has to dance with all kinds of bells around her waist and topless and to pull them out. You know, this is femininity gives a man a rise. Okay, femininity does it. Femininity creates attraction with a man. Uh, and so, yeah. the, you know, her job is that. Then the next part of it is men who pursue you, you practice being more feminine. Now, being more feminine is, again, counterproductive today because our mothers didn't know, didn't need to know how to do this because they were already more feminine because they depended on a man for financial uh, support. Yeah. She more feminine. See, yeah. dependence, anytime you depend on something, you're yeah. going to have estrogen. You're gonna, yeah. estrogen. Estrogen goes up. If you depend, uh, when you go see a doctor, estrogen goes up. When you're listening to me talking, if my ideas seem helpful, estrogen's going up. So right. anytime you're you, know, you know what, doctor, that is exactly, if you allow me to say a couple of words, that's exactly what I saw when I moved to the States from Argentina. I love the States right away. And I particularly loved women because here women were so strong and they have a say in the matter and they weren't taking any BS from anybody. But then I started to see how they struggle in the relationships while me being Latina and from another culture and from a culture where we are dependent on men. Yes, I mean, yes. we were 20 something years ago. I don't know now, but I probably hasn't changed that much. So in, in Argentina, in a way, you depend on a man to, to have yes. a good life. Yes. So, and that's something that I, I saw the difference so clear of how being a little bit vulnerable in a way. Yes, that's vulnerable, more... completely vulnerable. Yes. I, I wanted to share that with you. Yeah, so, no, you're absolutely right. It brings in a whole nother dimension. Uh, vulnerability. First of all, I was in South America giving a talk one time. It was a rather large group. Yes. And so there was question and answers. And somebody stood up. He says, John Gray. You're saying all these things to create romance, to be uh, uh, give your wife flowers and be complimentary and don't get angry at her and uh, ask more about her feelings, uh, prioritize her. And but in our culture, we understand that if a woman is going to get turned on, you have to slap her. You have to slap her around. You have to be tough. You have to be macho. Me first. And why does that turn women on? And it does. nobody got upset with the questioner. I said, is this true? <laughs> nobody is like, macho turns women on. Well, macho is dangerous. I have been living in the wrong country all these years. <laughs> <laughs> macho, because when a man is, is when, if a woman has a macho father, she's always seeking to please the father. So she's in danger. So she gets turned on by danger. But polarity is also a, a way to get turned on to each other. And nobody teaches this, how important right. polarity is in order to create that attraction. We're all dependent on um, the danger or the newness. You know, many men are not, they lose attraction to their partner. They, they need a new partner. They need a new partner. The people have to go on vacations in order to feel arousal with each other. Right. Have sex every day. I'm 72 years old. Maybe not every day, but every other day at least. You know, the oh, passion is there, unquenchable passion. I mean, my body, yes, I, I become like a teenager and I'm not a teenager, I'm 72 years old, but my testosterone levels on average for me, it's 50% higher than when I was a young man. Because hmm. I have polarity in my life. Hmm. I, I, so if you look at, you, you talk about previous generations, 
we had to evolve out of that because women were feminine from one point of view, which is they were dependent on men, but they didn't have the skills to set boundaries. Right. Is the gatekeeper. You can't come into my body. You can't come into my life. I'm not going to let you affect me, which is vulnerability, unless you earn your way in. So right. I'm reserved. I'm not going to just give it out free. Okay. So this is like really. And so as culture evolved, then now women have to learn how to set boundaries and say no, because they have different needs. Needs evolve. This right. is another aspect of this. Maslow explained that when you're in survival, you have certain needs. When you have security, danger, you have certain needs. These are like basic things. You right. survive is heat and cold and shelter and food. But then security is once I have things, people can take it from me. <laughs> so right. I need safety. Then I need to feel to get safety. Another need emerges, which is to feel uh, included, it's belonging, that you're in a group, that you have your people. Okay, that's a, but these are low levels. Right. The higher level is self-expression, you know, that I am capable of being happy without depending on others. That's kind of your 20s. You learn what makes you happy, how to feel good. Then you're ready to be in a relationship where you come into the relationship, I can make myself happy, but I need somebody to make me happier. And right. that's my job. My job is not to make my wife happy. Men have to get this. And women have to get your job, him, is not to make you happy. His job, first of all, is not to make you unhappy. Okay, so we, we can make a mess, all right? And we, those are all the relationship skills. But the, the dynamic for women is to have a life that produce a a baseline of estrogen or progesterone, depending upon the time of the month. And right. I go into details in the book on that. But the estrogen levels need to be at the right level for you. Then you're basically satisfied, content. Then romance starts. So if, if a woman has low estrogen and I empty the trash, well, I do his laundry. That's her reaction. Nothing. Right. But if she's feeling really good and she sees me emptying the trash, she goes, what a great husband I have. I don't have to worry about that. I don't like doing that. He's doing it for me and he doesn't complain. That becomes romantic. This yeah. is the amazing thing. So I wouldn't think women and don't understand women <laughs> because you do one thing when she's not very happy, it has no effect at all. You do something, some little thing over here, it has a big effect. It has to do with her temperature, so to speak, or the glasses she's wearing at that time. Right, right. It's so, a, so it's anyway, a it's so a we, talked, we talked about the, the big the big issue is the world used to, in a sense, force with culture, put women in a situation to produce female hormones. And why do they do that? Because it's female hormones that give you fertility and give you the desire for sex. So when your estrogen levels, when there's polarity, if I'm approaching my wife from a place of selflessness and caring and sensitivity to her and all that. I have to have a lot of testosterone to do that. That's testosterone. But when she responds in a positive way to that, my testosterone goes higher. I give a little more. Her estrogen goes a little higher. That's the romantic stages of a relationship. His behavior stimulates hormones in her that allows her to respond with trust because trusting is part of uh, depending. Okay, but you're not fully trusting. He has to earn it. The second one is acceptance. He's not perfect, but it's okay. And the third is appreciation. So whenever a woman appreciates a man, accepts a man, trusts a man, and that is admires a man, right. depends on him for certain things that have meaning. That is being feminine and masculine is, and a man is needy, big turn off. That's why women are so afraid of being needy because if a man is needy, if a man's expressing his emotions all the time, which is estrogen, Women get so turned off, they're afraid that if they express emotions, men will be turned off. But no, uh, men always want to feel like I have something to offer you. Now, that emotions is, is the most important part of vulnerability. And I talk about that. I have a woman coming to my office for counseling. Like, tell me what you're feeling, what emotions you're having. And she'll just talk about in her head. Uh, well, I feel like my husband doesn't do this. He doesn't do this. I'm, I can't do this or my job. I'm getting not getting what I, that's all just head stuff. There's no femininity in that at all. A little because you're sharing what's inside of you without holding back. Okay, that's one. But two, emotions need to be shared. Now, of course, the ideal is I, you're happy to be with a man. Okay, the positive right. happiness. Oh, I had such a good time. I, you want to compliment him on a date? That was the best movie I ever saw. If you say that to him, what an amazing movie you brought me to. 
he takes it personally. He says men taking it personally, like I'm a hero because of that. When you're talking with him, most women, because they don't understand how men are different, a woman instinctively knows if he asks her a lot of questions and listens to her, she'll feel safer. He feels, you know, it's like healthy. He knows me. He he doesn't get upset with me. He feels comfortable with me. So that's him asking questions of her. But because women know how good that feels, they assume that that's going to feel good to a man. <laughs> it's not that it doesn't feel good to him, but it puts him on his female side. Right. You're asking him a lot of questions. He'll just start talking. So women often complain to me that men are so narcissistic. They're so selfish. He just keeps talking and talking and talking. He doesn't ask anything about me. But he doesn't ask anything about you because you keep asking him questions. You can right. be a good listener. Don't listen to his stuff minimize it you know you, you want to listen a little so that you can then bounce off of that to then share so right. you know, you're having a conversation like what are you doing on the election you know have to say well that makes sense three magic phrases for dating women that <laughs> makes sense well that's really a good idea well that's helpful for me uh amazing i hadn't thought of that before any kind of little things these are like powerful phrases you repeat over and over he never gets tired of hearing it just like if you say to a woman you're so beautiful. I love you so much. I know. I'm so committed to you. You're the only woman in the world for me. You know, these are the things that women don't get tired of. Men don't know that. Women don't know. Men don't get tired of. Anytime he says something that makes sense, ah, that makes sense. Okay, it's like that had an impact on me. I'm reacting to that in a positive way. Right. And I enjoyed the date so much and so forth. And in the beginning, you don't share negative feelings. You share positive feelings. But as you get to know somebody, now you're feeling more safe to really connect, you need to reveal the things you wouldn't share with other people. These are like secrets. Now, what is the biggest secret that all women have to a certain extent? And women are all about secrets. That's why you put on makeup, okay? That's why you put on outfits, okay? You're the best at it. <laughs> so it's like, because you should be, you're the gatekeeper. You can't see the goods. You can't get inside of me. But what you do is a certain point, you begin to share your vulnerable feelings that are not so positive. And so, and don't, don't share anything ever about body image. Okay. Never say, you know, well, I feel insecure about my hair or my, this or my breasts or my nipples or this, or never say any of that stuff. Men don't know that until you tell them. Okay. Just get, get that. Once you share it, you know, he's going to, Oh, what, what's wrong with that? Well, maybe yeah. so. don't talk about your body to him, but talk about your emotions to him in a context it's not about him or your relationship. Right. I think it's counterintuitive for women. I want to talk about my feelings about you. No, not right away. It's a long way before you get there. But you begin to share, you know, I had kind of a tough day today. I'm going to be the woman. I had a tough day at my job. Uh, I, I, I feel so comfortable with you. I just want to share for a few minutes my emotions to let them go. And then I'll be fine. And, and if you can just right. listen, I really appreciate it. So then you start sharing in an intelligent way. I call it emotional intelligent way. Today, this happened, a little bit of information about it. I was so frustrated I, because I wanted this and it didn't happen. Uh, then, then you go to something else, okay? And I was so disappointed when I saw that this person didn't arrive and now I had to do this whole thing. And I was really hoping that was going to happen. Share a little disappointment. Then... You know, and when all those things are happening, I feel a bit concerned. Minimize it a little bit. I feel a bit concerned. Whenever you minimize, men will give you more attention. Whenever you have strong uh -huh. emotions, men now have to minimize. If you minimize a little bit, he will go right into it. That makes sense. Totally. Uh, always men are saying, don't worry about it. That's not a big deal. Or why you're upset with that. And that's one of the warning signs for men is, you know, she's overreactive. She dramatizes. Right. That danger, 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 danger. So in this, in this situation, you, you share a little bit about what you normally would not share with anybody, except maybe a best friend, girlfriend. Even then you just talk about it. See, women have no skills, generally speaking, and being able to say, I was frustrated because I didn't get this and I wanted that. I was disappointed because I thought this was going to happen and this didn't happen. And I'm concerned now because this might happen. And maybe they're thinking this or this could happen in the future. And that fourth emotion is I feel embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed today. I said this to so-and-so. Talk about putting yourself one down in front of a man. He lifts you up. See, this is the whole thing. Women have always known this. Never be smarter than a man. That was the old way of looking at it. 
But now be smart, just be vulnerable emotionally because right. uh, he doesn't have that emotional vulnerability that you have. And he'll feel like, okay, I, I, I can be here for you. But then he thinks his job is to tell you don't feel that way because that's that's <laughs> his world, which is don't have those feelings. Suck it up, be a man, don't whine and complain, get the job done. It's not a big deal. So what? Right. We Some men still have that ability because they haven't been so feminized. Because see, you ask, well, why is this happening? One part of why this is happening is because we're being trained by women, we're being trained by psychologists, we're being trained at universities, that being feminine is better than being masculine. Mm. Part of what men are trained to do is not whine about their emotions, not whine about their feelings, never let yourself get angry, don't cry. Now, little boys, yes, they, you create safety for that because they haven't yet got their burst of testosterone, which is 10 times higher than a little boy. 10 times higher testosterone. Wow. What that testosterone does is it frees you from negative emotions. You don't suppress emotions. You just forget them. Something bothered you. You either solve it or you say it's no big deal and I let it go. See, we're doing that all the time. Now, when a woman's on her male side, she'll say, well, there's nothing I can do about it. So forget it. Those emotions are in there. See, you can't run from your emotions. And if you keep pushing them down, then everything becomes a problem for you because you're not letting your your yeah, uh, it's like the potato. Up. Remember the potato in the drawer. Would you say that again? Like the potato that you were saying. The yes, you put the potato in the drawer and what comes out. Yeah. And then what happens when there's a buildup, this is standard psychology now, not gender specific, but just standard psychology. And the problem with standard psychology is it doesn't understand that men and women are different. <laughs> there's mm -hmm. this whole normalization of we're all just the same and the same things apply. Well, in the medical field, you would never treat a woman with medicines the way you treat a man. You don't consider a heart attack symptom in the way a man has a heart attack. You don't treat them differently. And of course, we have doctors especially for women and we have doctors especially for men. But suddenly we have all these psychologists who are giving us advice on relationships and they're not saying for men, you do this, for women, you do this. It's just like nuts. And so it's guiding us all just to think what's good for me is always good for my partner. And right. it's not the same. So- for women, for example, as a man, I, I, I have to know my priorities is selflessness, demonstrating caring for her, messages that she's a priority and I care about her. And that's what a dating does. It's for her. It's not, she says, well, what would you like to do to him? And he's, well, I like to go to the football game. Okay. All right. Don't football. ask him. No, don't, don't. Unless you're really a big football fan and you want to go. Oh but, my God. So the dynamic here is when you're dating, and I, I, our time's kind of running out, so I want to make sure I throw in one of my favorite dating advices, which is when you're dating, particularly in 30s and 40s, you're looking for the partner that you want to, that you want something substantial with. You're looking for, in a certain sense, your soulmate. You're looking for the right person for you. Now, if you were to do, and that's a mistake from my point of view, if you were to come to my house, I have a beautiful home, and you would say, wow, what a great home. This is amazing. But if you were looking for a house to buy and you thought, wow, this is a great home to buy. Now, as you're thinking about paying a lot of money for this house, which is giving your life over to somebody, before you buy it, you hire people in order to inspect the house, to see what's mm -hmm. wrong with the house. This is what our brain does. Whenever you put a high value on a man, now your brain's going to immediately go into a bias or well, what's wrong with him, what's wrong with him, what's wrong with him. So you can set your brain up to, I'm not looking for my soulmate. I'm looking for a series of positive dates with the same person or other people in order to practice my relationship skills of being more feminine, which is making sure he listens to me more than I listen to him, making sure he's wanting to please me more than I'm willing to please him, right. making sure that I'm not just going to jump into bed with him because he wants to have sex and I'm afraid of losing him. So right. when a communication skill there, which is helpful because I really say women got to start setting boundaries, not going over your, your, your male side, wanting to have sex. And when women want to have sex, by the way, without a lot of estrogen, without uh, feeling support over time, it's because they're on their male side. See, women today in the workplace make more testosterone, make less estrogen. That's proven. And the symptom of that uh, being a proven is we know that when women are producing stress hormones, their estrogen is low and their testosterone is high. Now, you can look logically, psychologically, and you say, when you don't feel safe to depend on someone, that's estrogen, then you go, well, I'll have to do it myself. Every woman knows that place. And in relationship, 
you start feeling disappointed, well, I'll have to do it myself, as opposed to, no, you shouldn't do so much yourself. They're estrogen. Oh, and my oh. experience is men are so responsive. A good man will want to move a mountain for us. Absolutely. We just don't give them enough time sometimes. We are so pa 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 pa, you know, like we can think and do and ta -ra -ra, that I think men they need more time to to they, they need more time and they also it needs to build up, okay? Right. That is no, women are basically codependent where they're de <laughs> that codependence is basic making somebody else's needs more important than your own. Now that's an important skill if you have children, all right? Yeah. Or you shouldn't have children until you first know what my needs are and how I can get what I need. Okay. And then you cannot be uh, codependent with it, but it's unconditional love. But that's a woman's got instincts for that to give more than she's getting. And that's what you have to fight in a relationship, which is don't nurture the man, get him to nurture you. If you nurture a man all the time, then women will say, well, I feel like his mother and I don't have any attraction to him. And then right. I feel like I'm his mother. I do everything. And now I resent him. So you're not a very nice mother. So, so the flip side of that is men, on the other hand, if you are dating men and, and some women walk around going, oh, men are also selfish. They're narcissists. If you actually have narcissists, it's because you're codependent. You mm -hmm. train men to be selfish because you make their needs more important than your own. How to get a man to come over to your side is asking for help and not feeding his tendency to be selfish. Every man has this gene of me first. You have to be me first if you want to provide for somebody. I go out and I do the dirty, dangerous, difficult jobs so that, and don't whine about it, don't complain about it, it's me first. I have to do what I have to do so I can then give to my family unconditionally. I right. go into the battle, okay? It's it gotta be me first. You gotta be thinking about yourself all the time. You're hunting, it's always about me. It's about me getting the biggest uh, piece of meat. I gotta be the best guy in the, in the tribe, okay? Right. You see, everything is me, 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 so that I can give to the woman. And that generosity of selflessness then comes out of him knowing women need me. And when they need me, they love me. And they're turned on to me. But you have to earn that way in. First, you're interested, you're smiling, you're having a happy time, you're revealing. And back with the revealing part, most important part there is when you're sharing your feelings and your emotions with a man, never let the problem be about him. Mm -hmm. And when he tries to solve the problem, cut it short, you're the gatekeeper, and you just say, well, that makes sense. It's a good idea. But right now, I pretty, I just need to share those feelings. And, and then I start feeling really good. It's a girl thing, just like that. And a guy will go, oh, okay. As long as she's happy, we're attracted to you. When you're unhappy, we're not attracted to you. But you can't pretend to be happy because everybody's got, particularly women, have these suppressed emotions. So reveal a bit of it. That makes you vulnerable. Then yeah. when you finally get in a relationship, just to take this to the top, why did relationship sex and all that go away? The most vulnerable thing we can do with somebody is have sex. And again, vulnerability is one stage and it's like a flower opening. You don't reveal. Everyone is a good thing. And then when you start having sex, you have to be in a committed monogamous relationship. What you're doing then, if you're having sex without getting what you need, a sense of security and safety, you're having sex making testosterone. Oh, so wow. See, there's two types of sex. There's sex raising testosterone and that ends with it's over. And then there's something called raising estrogen. And it goes on and on and on. Okay. So in graphic terms, when you're stimulating the clitoris, focusing on your clitoris, you're making testosterone. Oh. When you're receiving and enjoying with no goal in mind, you don't have to have an orgasm. You don't try to have an orgasm. You take that out of the picture. Oh. Guys, you know, I had, did you have an orgasm? You say, oh yes, it was fantastic. Just say that. But the reality is don't ever try to have an orgasm. You will become orgasmic. Orgasmic, that was the best experience I had in my life. That was so good. I love that so much. I feel so good. And don't dwell too much on clitoral stimulation, just enough to increase your desire for him to penetrate you. But what oh. happens is women get addicted to the dopamine that gets produced when you get the spikes of testosterone from stimulating the clitoris. So a lot of the girls are just all home. When they're single, they're all using their vibrator. It's just raising more testosterone. It doesn't raise estrogen. What raises estrogen is romance, communication, him doing things for you, asking him to do things for you. 
And that's really tough for women. I tell you, they just, they're so afraid of a guy going, well, you're being selfish. And you, you basically say, I just need five minutes of, or 10 minutes of you doing some things for me or raise my estrogen and I'll feel really good because I'm so on my male side, have to do everything. It relaxes me. So there's a context for the, you create a context in a relationship or you just start practicing asking for what you want. And that's why if you follow my formula, which is don't date men you're trying to please, date men who are trying to please you, then your codependence doesn't come out. Then you can start practicing. It's scary. If you have, if you have a gold mine, how can I get upset with him? How can I ask for more? How can I have tell him yeah. what I want as opposed to what he wants? Intimidating. It's too intimidating. Very intimidating. Too much, too much to lose. I mean, between... That's exactly right. So when you have somebody, there's not much to lose because right. you're not attracted to them very strongly and you practice your skills and you practice being vulnerable. You These are new things for women. And then what happens is you in that relationship, find the right relationship. Or it could even be that this guy that didn't turn you on could become the right person. I know with one of my clients, there's a guy pursued her for like a year and a half and she was like friends with him, but he was very clear not being friends with her. He 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 didn't like share his feelings. He didn't like show his problems. He was always there for her, he was pursuing her. And then they were going down some mountain or something and she was starting to slip and he grabbed her and she fell in love with him. Oh. It was like he was her hero. It just, it had to build up where she felt safe, safe, safe. And then he did it. And people today go, well, you never want to be in the friend zone. Well, the friend zone is where a man starts to need a woman and starts to share his feelings, starts to share his problems. And everybody's being taught, what are you feeling? What's going on inside? If you're dating a guy and suddenly he gets closed up, don't ask him what he's feeling. You're looking always for reassurance. He's approving of you, accepting you, caring about you, not judging you. So you basically, when he pulls, when he pulls away, another important thing, you'll say something immediately he'll, he'll withdraw because whenever a man is challenged, he has to disconnect from his estrogen, pump up his testosterone. So, you know, that feeling where men will just detach, they'll just disappear and you, you panic. What happened? We were connecting and he just disconnected. You just say to him, oh, you're thinking about that. He'll go, yeah. Create a positive context for him to withdraw. It gives him the space to come back. Right. So those, I mean, we covered a lot of points today. We covered a lot, but it's such an unbelievable work what you are doing, what you have done all these years. And you helped me so much at so many levels. I mean, I can tell you so many things that you helped me and uh, and many, many millions of women. You you were truly a legend, Dr. Gray. You, well, you are one of those people that it's it's like, I don't even know how you live with yourself. <laughs> well, my wife pushes me down enough. Yeah, <laughs> good. I'm glad. I'm so, glad. Go, go, to, go to make her do something, you know, put you in your place. Just... My life has been, this is my profession. I've learned to do this. And fortunately, it's kept me married and happy and all those things. Because and your daughter is doing this too. Say that again? Your and daughter is doing Lauren has amazing courses yeah. on the website. The, the best one I would recommend is called Understanding Men. If you go there and check out Understanding Men, it's such I a will. good we, were, we spent a year and a half working on it together. But it's her course. I love that, that you are working with her. And it's just, yes. you are unbelievable. And unbelievable. I know you. everybody tells you, but. Well, well um, many people have not experienced my books or whatever. And would you share one or two things that my, my books helped you? For it's something that I always remember is the fact that I used to get, um, I mean, triggered is such a strong word. I don't know what other word we can use, but let's use triggered. Uh, when my men will ignore me, you know, for some reason, like he'll come back from work and I'll go to the garage because, you know, I go to the garage, you know, to kiss and hug and whatever. I always do that. And he'll be like, mm -mm 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 ignore me and it used to be heartbreaking it you would take it personally you would take it personally. totally a hundred a thousand percent and I didn't see any other way around it was about me there was something wrong about me and ta -da 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 -da. and then when I learned through your books I don't know which one because I read a few of them that 
men need some time to kind of like disconnect from work to come to family time and that that, that was okay that that didn't have anything to do with me so good that you could accept that see the dynamic that's one we'll just finish that point that's enough so beautiful it's such a big good. deal when I wrote it's huge. Wrote, it's huge. Do you have a piece of mind you gave me? It's huge. Because that happens every day. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, here, just to understand, connection produces estrogen. If man's estrogen goes high, his testosterone goes low, now he needs to disconnect. This connection creates right. testosterone. Connection creates estrogen. So a real puzzling thing for a woman is you go on a romantic weekend together and his estrogen is loving you, being with you. His estrogen is going to go so high. When he comes back, he's going to ignore you for a while. I know. That's another thing my husband does. They, they, they drive back. We went to Big Sur last year. We had an amazing time. This, You know Big Sur. It's the ultimate romantic place. He almost didn't talk to me on the drive back. And yeah, if I didn't it. know... I, I would have been miserable, but now I understand. So I don't take it personal and I let him be whatever, you know, you do you're it. So, you're so smart. And the, the flip side of this is for men, what I've learned is that when my wife is upset about something, it seems like an overreaction. If I don't overreact, if I don't try to push her down, she'll come back to normal. Right. It's just, it's just a process. <laughs> her, she's needing to bring up some feelings in order to lower her stress. Men need to detach in order to lower stress. So, you know, I was just with my my grand my granddaughter, little new newborn, so precious. Oh, congratulations! Your first one. Uh, yes, yeah. Well, I have four, and that's a fifth. This is with oh, Lauren. Lauren has, a, Lauren has a new baby. Oh, her one first baby, and it's really precious. I mean, this is this five months. All right, just total love. <laughs> just so now, if I compare me now to the me. When, when she was a baby, I would get tired so quickly huh. taking care of my child because it produced so much estrogen, so much love pushes down testosterone. Yeah. Now me, what is it, 40 years later, having built up my testosterone as I got older and my estrogen as I got older, I could be all day with this child. It doesn't tire me out at all. Because ah, that makes have so my much sense why grandparents are so different with their grandchildren than with their kids because with their kids they're so stressed out that it raises the wrong hormone but i see that and and it took it took you know for me if, if you progress as a man ultimately your confidence increases your wisdom increases your grounding increases you've got your life pretty much together that means your testosterone's up because every man, as he gets older, unless he's a psychopath, his estrogen levels will rise. Okay, this is what this is actually what kills men. When men have high estrogen, they're just retired, so they're just doing what they like to do. That's estrogen. Right. And they're not doing anything they have to do. That's testosterone. Then right. they get a heart attack. Always, when right. a man has a heart attack, he has lower testosterone than normal for him. That's mm -hmm. it. That's aging. Aging happens as. You know, I, my friends are my age. They don't even make love anymore with their wives. You know, it's a thing of the past. And, you know, it's interesting. They don't see it as a problem uh, because they're not, they're not turned on. But yeah. when you're turned on and you have the potential, you, you want more sex. So there's a whole art to making love. And, and as a man matures, it can go higher or it can go lower, depending on polarity. Polarity is everything. Unbelievable. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. This is the highlight of my year. You have no idea. Uh, uh, it's you are unbelievable. Out of this world. You must be an alien. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in it for Mars. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Probably unconsciously, I meant it. Yes, I know that. <laughs> I didn't mean it consciously. I'm cheesy, but not that cheesy. But that was a good one. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much, Dr. Gray. Enjoy your new grandbaby. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.